Right, as, as a little bit of an extra thing, just with today's conditions, with it being so windy or low, to be honest, it's calmed down a little bit now. But I just want to go through a few things with, um, more so with rigs and plumbing up, that you really need to pay attention to when the weather's, when the weather's not perfect, when you've got a lot of movements on the water. So it's just a couple of things, say both with shotting, sizes of floats, little things to do with my rig, and the plumbing up, definitely, that can make a massive difference to your fishing. Just to maintain that you'd be more accurate, and you just present your bait in a better way on these bad conditions, instead of just doing things how you'd normally do, whether it was nice, windy or whatever. So firstly, what I want to go through, before I go into the plumbing up, is some rigs. So obviously I've got it all plumbed up ready, but we'll talk about that in a sec. And what I tend to have a rule of, is I fish either through the water or wire stem floats. I'll fish one or the other, either um, carbon stem strung out or wire stem with heavy shotter down the bottom end. What you'll find in um, wild conditions when it's really windy is that fishing more accurately with heavy shotting down the bottom end can be far more productive, simply because it's nigh on impossible to maintain a really nice slow falling rig um, with the water moving through so quickly. So I tend to keep everything very accurate, feeding with the pots, keep everything really tight just to try and improve my chances of keeping my bait where I want it to when it's windy. So with that said, what I've gone with is a really, really positive float. I've gone with a 4 16 float in four foot of water, which is, it's, it's quite excessive. It's not something I'd do um, if the weather was nice. I'd probably use a 4 14s in that case. What I've also done, so this will be my first choice on a windy day, is swap to a round bodied float. For 99% of my fishing, I always go with a slim, um, like elongated rugby pole type, float for commercial fishing I don't believe you need anything else unless the weather's bad so for these days though when it's really pushing through and there's a lot of ripple on the water a round body float's going to outperform that a lot simply because of the buoyancy added by the um, the body of the float helps the float ride a little bit higher and lets the water pass along it a little bit easier because it's short and stubby so in that case as I say I've gone for a wire stem 4b16s um, round body float also gone with a nice proper bristle on it I've gone with a 1.7 bristle which again allows buoyancy of my bristles, so it's not going to uh, pull under the water every time that wind's pushing against my float. It's going to remain a little bit more buoyant and just help me out with the wind pushing against the float. So that's my float choice done. Secondly, what I'm after is a very, very, very positive form of shotting. So let's say there's no place for spread out shot all through my rig. What I want instead is a spread bulk. For me in the wind, there is no other form of presentation worth fishing. Yeah, if I'm fishing in um, away from the margins in excess of two foot of water. For me, a spread bulk is the only way to go, simply because the way I want my rig to behave. Because what I'm after today, so in today's case, I've got the wind going from right to left. So at the moment, so we've not been here too long and it's not been windy for too long, so I don't expect there to be any tow. So depending which way the water's going, I'm going to assume it's going with the wind today at the minute. So what I'm after trying to achieve is instead of a, a dead straight rig, what I actually want is a curled rig in the water. So while my, my float's moving to its left, because my wind's blowing to my left, my bait will actually be a few inches to the right of my float. And what that shot in actually allows is it to curl slowly in the water. So my rig's gonna be almost like you'd expect a, um, a stick float to be on a river, but the reverse. So you've got that nice curl, less fluent curl through my rig that allows me to keep in contact with my bait, which is the tricky bit in the wind. But say by having a spread out bulk, it allows that curve to happen. It allows it to sit and just curve on the bottom instead of pivoting like it would if I had a, a solid bulk. If I was to have a solid bulk right off my hook length, then it would be a solid bulk, and my, just my hook length would kick off. And that would allow quite a bit of slack in my hook length, which I don't want. So by, say, spreading my shot out in the bottom, bottom third to bottom quarter of my rig, so it allows me to create that nice curl on the bottom with my float pulling it downwind, and I'll be able to keep in contact with my bait. Alternatives to that, though, or almost to contradict what I've just said, if the toe wins, if the toe's more prevalent than the, than the wind, then I'm going to try and do it the opposite way. Whatever way my, uh, the water's moving, I want my float to go down toe or downwind. So it's always creating that nice arc. So it's worth paying attention. Just because the wind's blowing that way doesn't mean the water's going the same way. It could quite easily bounce back and come on the opposite way. So it'll all depend on the venue and how windy it is. But rig components sorted, or pretty much. What I want to just run through quickly is the correct ways of plumbing up depending on how windy it is. So to begin with, and this weather's worked out almost lovely while it's flat calm now, I've plumbed this rig up to be set how I'd want it to be set if the conditions were, were as they are, nice and flat calm. So when I plumb up in normal situation, 
I'm looking for, when I'm sat in my box, to be plumbing up to the middle of my body of my float. So if you can see that there, I'm right on middle of my body. And what that'll allow me to do is if I was to put my bait in that position right there, then what it actually allows my float to do is to move all the way down my peg to here. So that's a good six inches. Create that arc, but not interfere with my bait. So it sort of, it reduces the pressure and reduces the chance of my bait moving through my peg because it's a nice curl and it's not a really straight line. If I were to plumb it up really straight here, can I get a little bit deeper? There, say, then my float's gonna get, as soon as it moves to the left, that movement's gonna be imparted on my hook bait and it's gonna make my hook bait move as well if I were to plumb up to, to almost dead depth where my rig's dead straight in the water. Now, so with it being really windy today, what I may be inclined to do is to plumb up even further to give it even more line. So there, I'll give it another two inches perhaps. And what that does, it allows my float to move even further down my peg, but it also increases that arc. Yeah, the, the slower the curl of that arc, the less chance of my hook bait moving through the water or moving along the bottom. So the windier it is, you're not actually laying any line on the bottom, you just increase that arc of the rig and saying it reduces the pressure. It gives you much greater chance of being able to hold that bait in place without it moving off the spot where I fed. I'd say the last thing that you might notice with me rig that's a little handy thing to have on these windy days is I've left quite a bit more line in between my float and my pole. So this is a big mistake I see all the time people doing is fishing with little tiny six and eight inch lashes between the float and the pole. It gets windy and you just physically can't hold it. There's no way of holding that still if this wind really gets up like it has been today. So by leaving myself a good, I'll be pushing 20 inches here, 15 to 20 inch, it just gives me a bit of allowance to my pole to bounce about a little bit and I'm not going to move my float as much. What I've also got to aid presentation a little bit more on that is if we whiz over here, Rich, is that I'll never ever fish without a back shot. And in windy days, I'll actually double the weight or even triple the weight of my back shot. In that I'm always after one number eight. I fish with one number eight right in between my float and my pole. And on windier days, I'll increase that to two, three, I'll possibly swap to a great big shot, a BB, an SSG, who knows. Whatever it takes to create that shape in the water. As you can see, if my float was sat in the water now, I want to be able to hold my back shot just underwater so it sinks that little piece of line in between my float and the back shot. And in turn, by sinking that, again, it, it stops this line floating on the top, moving all over the place and moving my bait on these windy days. So just by a couple of back shots, they sink that little bit of shot but also, as a little added bonus, they make the line in between my, my pole and my back shot tight. So I actually respond to a bite quicker. So although my line's, yeah, I'm gonna say 15 inch, the, the, the top seven or eight inch is already tight. So I'm only actually picking up um, five, six, seven inches, however far I've got my back shot away from my float. That's the line I'm picking up on the strike. So it's both uh, enabling a bit more stability to my float, but also it's making me react to them bites quicker. So a nice little added bonus. Definitely worth trying a back shot, just help your presentation on, on all days, to be honest.